بسم الله والحمد لله بسم الله والحمد لله يا عظيم يا عليم يا قديم يا حليم يا رحيم يا كريم يا الله بسم الله والحمد لله so today i want to talk about <coughs> the story of the people of hud alayhi salatu wassalam and remember there were some prophets sent to bani israel which are most of the prophets in the quran but then the Quran specifically mentions some prophets that were sent to the Arabs. Why? As a special warning to the Arabs that you in particular, O Arabs, O leaders of the Arabs, O leader of the Muslims, you in particular have to be careful of what you are doing in regards to these things that the previous nations of the Arabs did. One of them was the people of Hud, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was... Uh, a prophet sent in Hadr al Maut uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, and they had to suffer uh, the dire consequences. So, now today we're going to study about Prophet Hud, alayhi salatu wasalam. But if you recall the hadith of Jibra'il, alayhi salatu wasalam, where the Prophet said that there would be people, they would be bareless, without any shoes, naked and destitute. What would they do? They would compete in building tall buildings. There's an indication of this particular phenomenon, even though if you read the whole of Quran, it becomes very clear that there is a link between technology and power and arrogance. That whenever nations like Fir'aun reached a certain level of power, and a certain level of arrogance, then what happened? Then they acted in a certain specific way. Uh, that was not pleasant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah got rid of them. Today the Arabs are acting, and when I say Arabs, I don't, the Prophet was an Arab. So we love the Arabs because the Prophet was an Arab, no matter what they do. We love the Arabs because the Prophet was an Arab. But when I say Arabs, I should say Arabs instead of Arabs for them. But when I say Arabs, I mean the leadership of the Muslim world today, particularly in the Middle East. These people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Quran to them in their language. The, they sent a pro, Allah sent a prophet to them in their language amongst their people. And these are the people that are for a lack of a better word, screwing up. These are the people that are making the biggest mistakes in the Ummah today. And they are making the same mistakes the Quran warns through those prophets that were sent specifically to the Arabs. Of great technology and having great pride because of the things you can construct. Because of the things you can construct. And so there's one aspect I want to share with you before I continue. Study identifies hundreds of genetic switches that affect height. See? Let me show you what one of the studies in the field of psychology shows that, you know, when there's a short man, you know, take like, for example, somebody like myself, and he's in a big car, right? So he, he is what? He is projecting his wanting to be big, bigger than he is, because he was short. So I'm 5'5", five five, not very tall. Okay, so somebody like me has an ego trip. I'm going to get a big car. I'm going to get a big house, right? And then with that comes and will come very soon. Study identifies hundreds of genetic switches that affect height. You'll see what this has to do with Prophet Hud, alayhi salatu wasalam. A genetic switch that activates the key gene for height discovered. Okay. And then genes, gene, gene engineers make supersized plants that are 40% larger. Of course, larger human being or a larger plant means more profits, more strength. Uh, New Zealand scientists discover DNA key to growing taller may lead to genetic height increase. And of course, uh, a little bit of understanding of Dijal would lead one to conclude, even though it's not there directly, 
but you can say mentioned indirectly that all these technologies will follow Vidyat, right, in a time where there will be no technology. So he will come as the savior. Scientists find a gene that makes some people taller. So now when we study the people of Hud, والسلام, not only are they constructing gigantic buildings, but they're also constructing what? They're also very tall and very strong and very sure of themselves and their power and their arrogance. So with this, inshallah, we begin uh, our study of Prophet Hud alayhi salatu After the fall to introduce the idols back into the worship, they were given the most power of any nation before. Every single individual in this town, massively built, powerfully built, these people were actually giants. So nobody could stand up to these guys. And so they were the superpower that took over much of the land. They used to build those palaces in the mountains, so unique palaces, for the sake of fun. But these were giant pillars, and they were decorated, and they had a lot of decor all around, and the beautification of this was next to nothing. These were the people of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to them now. What was his message? The same message of Nuh. All my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but Him. And such were the people of Ahad. They denied the revelation of their Lord and disobeyed His Messenger. This is in fact what they were asking for. It is the punishment of Allah coming with wind. Anything that this wind will pass will make it like dust. This wind will grab them, will take them up to the heavens, and with their heads smashed on the ground. Ahad disbelieved in their Lord, so away with Ahad, the people of Wood. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. After Nuh والسلام, his قوم, his nation, they remained upon Tawheed, upon the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for some time. Until there came a nation called Ad. Ad and Iram, the old one, nine for one tribe. Their location was a location called al ahqaf al ahqaf means sand dunes. So it's a desert area right now. It wasn't that case before. Where is it? Between Oman and Yemen, close to Hadramaut, in the southern Arabian Peninsula, Middle Eastern region. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described these people. And their description is amazing. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them is amazing. They were given the most power of any nation before them. The people of Ad were humongous people, gigantic people, very strong, very tough, and very smart. These people were actually giants. You know, they're, they're, they're taller than everybody else in the creation. They were, they were more muscular. Their bone structure were very, very powerful. So nobody could stand up to these guys. And as a result, when somebody is powerful and strong and nobody can stand up against them, they take over and they destroy. And so they were the superpower that took over much of the land. It's been narrated that it was so strong, so big, that one of them will grab a palm tree with his hand and pull it off. Pulling a palm tree with your hand? You need a bulldozer to take a palm tree. They would go anywhere and any law that they said was the law. Because of their power, because of their physical power, because of their political power. When they would attack any neighbors, they would completely destroy them. Tyrants. And the description of their armies, the Mufassirin, they said when they would leave the army, the army would leave their city. When the front rows of the army would reach the enemy, but the last of the armies still have not left their town. They had massive armies. Allah said, such people, such creation, I never created before in this world, ever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them livestock, and has given them manpower, and has given them agriculture, and has provided them with an ample supply, good supply of water. That is as a society. And then there is the individual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a powerful structure. And they had the gardens, and they had the rivers that flowed through those gardens. And because they are very smart, they were very civilized. They had wealth that was so enormous. They had so much luxury. They started to fall into the trap that rich nations fall into. And that is using your money for pride and arrogance. They would find a huge mountain. And they would just build something up there. A huge castle. Someone would pass by and they would say, Who built this castle? Who lives there? Nobody lives there. But it belongs to Ad. That they were not used for living. They don't need them. They're just building them for pride to show off. They had pillars all over. And if you look at it, it was like the golden city. It was a city you wanted to be in. That might be with all the technology that you have these days, that would not architect and engineer such good and big palaces in the mountains the way they had at those times. But these were giant pillars, and they were decorated, and they had a lot of decor all around, and the beautification of this was next to nothing. They used to build it in a way as if they were going to live forever. So strong and powerful. And some scholars say, even to the day of judgment, that palaces will ever exist like the ones they had. They were a proud an elegant nation, and they were the first individuals after the flood, after Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, from the progeny of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, they were the first individuals to start to commit shirk once again. They started to associate partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They specifically worship three idols. The names of the idols were Suda, Samud, and Hara. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to them now. His name was Hud. He was Hud, the son of Shalikh, the son of Arfakhash, the son of Sam, the son of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Prophet alayhi salatu wa said, from among the prophets and the messengers, there are four prophets and messengers who are Arabs. And the Prophet alayhi salatu said, Hud was an Arab, Salih was an Arab, Shu'aib was an Arab, and he told Abu Hurairah, and your prophet is also an Arab. Allah says, and to Ad, the people of Ad, we sent them their brother, Hud. The reason why Allah says brother here is because Hud alayhi salam came from their tribe. And he grew up amongst them, and they knew him as they know each other. So they learned his honesty, integrity, sincerity, truthfulness, character, and so on. Hud alayhi salam had a strong, enormous body, alayhi salam, and was very handsome. What was his message? The same message of Nuh. Oh my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but Him. Certainly you do nothing but invent lies. These gods who you are worshipping are lies. Remember what Allah Azza had given you. Remember what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had bestowed upon you. And remember what Allah had made you as one of the first successors after the tribe of Nuh. And He had given you strength, physical, strong physical bodies. Oh my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to Him. He will send you from the sky abundant rain and add strength to your strength. So with Istighfar, you would become more powerful than you are now. They were already powerful and strong. So what was the response of the people of Ad? The first thing they did was, they rejected him and they rejected his warnings. They said, O oh, Hud, no evidence have you brought us. And we shall not leave our gods for your mere sake. And we are not believers in you. They used to make fun of him. Wouldn't Allah send someone beside you, O oh, Hud? Who are you to come and tell us what to do? Can't you look at our strength? Can't you look at our power? Can't you look at our civilization? This is the way our forefathers used to worship. Who are you to come change it? The people of Ad will accuse Hud, saying, Look at the way you speak. You are acting different to us. You are speaking different to us. You are behaving different to us because our lords are angry from you. Subhanallah, lords, make out of statues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ad denied the messengers. How many messengers did they receive? One. How come it's made plural? If you refuse one messenger, it is as if you refuse them all. Because all the messengers came with the same message. If you refuse the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would not suffice you to believe in Isa or Musa or any other Nabi. If you disbelieved in one Nabi, in one Rasul, it is as if you have disbelieved in all of them. The disbelievers and the haughty from amongst his community, they began to say, you are foolish. We see that you are a foolish man. You are a fool. Who responded back said, there is no foolishness in me. I'm only a messenger from the Lord of this universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll convey the message of Allah to you. I'm only a good advisor and sincere advisor to you. I just want to warn you from a severe punishment that will come. You build yourself palaces and you don't live in it? And you build all these monuments and you don't benefit from it? Why are you doing this? Is it to show off to people? When you attack, you attack like tyrants and destroy your enemies without any trace, without any mercy? You know, Hud is telling them, look at the way you behave as a superpower in the world. Just because you have the power doesn't mean you have you can go and destroy everybody else that's under you. You have to have mercy and compassion towards the people. And the people of Hud, they didn't care. They were also amazed. Then how can a man come to us? If Allah wanted to send a messenger, he could have sent an angel. Why did he have to send a human being? Who are you to come now and change our way of life? This is the way things are here. This is the way we used to live and this is the way things are. Who are you to come change it? And they were stuck on their misguided way of life, their traditions. They're saying this to each other. They're saying that if you follow a man that is the same as you, same as you, he eats like you, he drinks like you. They said, in that case, you will be losers. What makes him any better than us? He says, oh my people. He says, don't you know, Allah is your creator. You think you're strong, you have muscles, you have power, you have military might, you have these tanks and whatever you got. Allah is the one who created you and everything you possess. So fear Allah and obey me. Now they are accusing Hud of lying against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are claiming that they are the true believers in Allah and he is lying against Allah. They said, there is nothing but our life of this world. We die and we live and we are not going to be resurrected. He is only a man who has invented a lie against Allah. But we are not going to believe in him. They started spreading a rumor that this man here, he's doing it for some ulterior motive. He wants some money. Allahu Akbar. Why? Why lay, lay accusations? So Hud alayhi salatu wasalam says, Oh my people, I'm not asking you to recompense me in any way whatsoever. My reward lies with the one who made me. And another thing they, they used to do is they had taxation. They had blocked some of the passageways and travel and they used to tax travelers. And they used to take the wealth of the people unjustly. And Hud alayhi salam is telling them, don't do this, don't do that. And he used to call them to social justice. And Hud alayhi salam will continue calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And calling them to Allah. And remind them about Allah. And calling them to Allah. And remind them about Allah azza wa jal. And the more he calls them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more they become stubborn against the call of Allah. And the more he reminds them about the tawheed, the more they get against the tawheed. And the more he reminds them about the favors of Allah upon them, the more they turn against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more they mock and make fun of Hud alayhi salam. To the stage they said, can't you look how strong we are? Who is stronger than us? Even your own Lord is not even stronger than us. 
They said, these tales that you are telling us about Nuh, because he told them that Nuh alayhi salam's people were destroyed just before you. He says, these are tales of the people of the past. As for us, we are stronger than them. We have much more than them. We cannot be destroyed. Allahu Akbar. They said, there is nobody more strong than us. No one. Who is there who has more power than us? This was a question they asked. So Allah responds immediately. Do they not see simple calculation in their brains that the one who created them, the Allah, is more powerful than them? Pride is what made them do what they did. And that's the same pride that made Iblis not to prostrate the Adam alayhi salam. Pride, the mother of diseases. Pride, the mother of all sins. And the only one that deserves to have pride is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the kind of thing they're going to say. Don't you get it? You tell us what to do. You don't tell us what to do. You warn us, you don't warn us. You give us advice, you don't give us advice. It's the same. We're not changing. So we've told you so many times. Hud alayhi salam got up in front of all his people and he says, Oh my people, I am making Allah bear witness and I am making all of you bear witness that I am free from all that which you have associated as partnership with Allah. So now, if you want to plot against me, all of you get together and let's see what you're going to do to me. Now this was a challenge the other way around. Now this was a challenge. The messengers never normally told the people, look, come attack me. When you come, you will see what will happen. Allah will destroy you just as you come. This is what he said. So they, they didn't come. And so the people of Hud said, Oh Hud, you've talked to us so much about this punishment. You kept bragging about this punishment. Bring the punishment. Go ahead. Bring it on. Who could punish us? We are Qawmahad. We are those with strength and pride. We are those with power. We are those with greatness. Who could punish us? Even your own Lord can't even punish us. You say that Allah can do anything against us? Do whatever you want. Who is more powerful than us? So he, he leaves it to Allah. He says, it's not up to me to punish you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think this is something personal between me and you, you're mistaken. I'm only giving you good advice. But if you don't believe me, then it's your own loss. So Hud alayhi salam at that point made dua. Hud alayhi salam, a dua mentioned in the Quran, one dua, short, short as anything. He says, Oh Allah, assist me because they have now belied me. That's all. Help me, ya Allah. That's all he said. And Allah responded immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't worry, Hud. Very, very soon they will regret everything. Allah still gives them that time. If they want to repent, they could repent to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens? Three years, for three solid years, not one drop of rain. And he, the people of Ad, start to realize many of the trees are dying, many of the plants are dying, many of the kettles are dying, they need water. What's happening here? And Hud told them, Oh my people, if you really want rain, there's two things you need to do. Repent and turn to Allah. And you know how strong you are? Allah will grant you more strength over and above the strength you already have. Look, we're not going to get punished. You've been telling us for years. Get the message. You've been saying you're going to get punished. We've been telling you, come on, bring the punishment. So Sayyidina Hud was saying, look, you are, you are in the punishment. You are in the punishment, guys, because the rains have stopped. That's the punishment. They said to him, what? You think that's punishment? No, no, no. The only reason why it stopped raining is because of you. That's what they said to him. The rains have stopped because our gods have cursed us and you. Because you're still wandering around saying bad things about them. The moment you leave, that's the moment the rain comes down. Don't understand? It's your problem. Now, subhanAllah, how do you argue with these people? Allah tells Hud and his followers to leave town. They leave. When he leaves the city and all the believers leave with him, don't forget, they're giving up their belongings, giving up their houses, giving up anything. And you can imagine there's almost like a party here now. They're thrilled. They, the guy's going. Man, my time. Get out of here, man, quick. They started to cry unto their gods. They used to offer sacrifices for their gods and they started asking their gods for rain. Now, whilst they were invoking the idols, suddenly they heard a voice from the heavens. A crier calls out from the heavens and says, Do you all want clouds? Then they all replied, yes. What color clouds do you all want? Do you want yellow clouds? Do you want red clouds? Blue clouds? What color do you want? They all cried out, we want gray, dark clouds. Why? Because the minute you see dark clouds, what comes to your mind? Ah, it's going to rain, mashallah. Right? The wife said, fine, you will have it. And now they were happy. They thought their invocation to their gods had been answered. And now they started to expect the dark gray clouds that were promised to them. They see a beautiful thing that they've been waiting for. One day, a gray, dark cloud is coming. On the horizon. They say, Woo! Do you see, guys? All these years we've been saying, The man is cursed. He's leaving now, and our gods are bringing the rain back again. When they saw this cloud coming to them, they said, This cloud is coming to give us rain. See how Allah makes you feel comfortable, feel very comfortable, feel very secured. But Allah says, If my servant secures me in this dunya, I'll make him fear me in the hereafter. And if my servant feeds me in this dunya, I'll secure him in the hereafter. Little than you, this cloud was the beginning of a great end. Rasulullah when he would see clouds approaching Medina, his face would change. You can see that he is worried. And Aisha would notice that. She asked Rasulullah She said, Oh Rasulullah, when people see the clouds, they are happy. Especially in Arabia because they don't receive a lot of rain. 
when people see the clouds are coming they are happy they are very pleased so aisha said when people see the clouds approaching they are happy but you look anxious rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said because a nation before us saw these clouds and thought that they had mercy they didn't know that it had the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had the fear in his heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so we sent upon them furious wind in days of evil omen for them severely cold and very ringing and loud voice and very furious this is the wind allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them by the way, I want to mention two things. One of the signs of the Day of Judgment is famine. And one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is Dukhan. So these clouds, they look very much like Dukhan, uh, which can be a result of, for example, nuclear uh, strike in the Arab world, by which very few Arabs will be left, as you know the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now these are not normal people. For the whole 24 hours, Allah gave you permission to go completely out of control. So it came around and it was twirling and twirling. Now 24 hours are gone. No, then Allah says, I let it continue the next day. It's carrying on. These people are still in the air. They're carrying on. And the next night, and the next day, 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 and they're still in the air. The, all the buildings, their belongings, the, all their pillars, all their luxuries, all of it's in the air. Allah said, I left it there. Four days, four nights, five days, five nights, six days, six nights, seven days, seven nights. And the eighth day, the wind was still blowing, and then the wind went, but then he went straight on the ground. It hit them on the ground. What happened is when they were left on the ground, they weren't in one piece. They were twisted, and they were twisted limbs, yes. But basically what Allah had done to them is Allah had broken every limb of their body. So you saw arms there, you saw hand there, you saw feet here, you saw body there, you saw parts of a body here. Allah said all over this whole city of a thousand pillars. All you saw was dead body after dead body. No, this world has never seen such a natural disaster in its history. Allah says that we might give them a taste of disgracing torment in this present world. But surely the torment of the hereafter will be more disgracing and they will never be helped. What was the result? When the dust settled up and you walked into the nation of Ad, what do you see? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so that you could see men lying over thrown as if they were hollow trunks of palm trees. These were very torment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they are like palm trees that are not down, upside down, lying dead. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us this question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you see any remnants of the people of Ad? We have remnants from the people of Rome, the pyramids. We have remnants from Samud, the dwellings of Samud. We have remnants from the Greek Empire. We have remnants from the Roman Empire. But from the Empire of Ad, we have nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely destroyed them because they were the most powerful. So Allah... But there are some traces which I'll talk about if we have time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely erased them from the face of the earth. And now it is the land called Al Alkaf, sand dunes. You don't even see nothing. Nobody even lives there. It's the desert now in Hadramaut, not Al Alkaf. It's the desert, empty. This is the nation which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "You're on the land of pillars, which no other land was similar." To. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not give the permission to that wind to get in Hud and those who believe with me. So the wind will come and move away from Hud and those who believe with Hud. And Hud was in a shed with some kettles, and Allah Azza wa Jalla even protected those kettles from that wind. Allah says, "And when our command came, we rescued Hud and those who believed with him." through our mercy, and saved them from a severe chastisement. When Hud salam returned and saw them this way, he said the following words, I advised you also, but you, O oh people, do not like the ones who advise you. And the believers with Hud lived. Hud didn't leave to a different city, they just went outskirts for the punishment to come. So that should be clear, because the Prophet of Allah has to witness the punishment. So now when he comes back, he says these words. In Hadramaut, in the Ahqaf, as all believers, and once again, Believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Tawheed took over the land until Hud alayhi salam passed away and it was buried in Hadramaut in Yemen. After them, by many generations, and from them, the tribe of Thamud will come. We will talk about Thamud and how it relates to uh, specifically the Arabs and the end times, inshallah, at another time. But for now, let's look at this. At the beginning of the 1990s, a most important archaeological discovery was made. That discovery was of an ancient Arab city. 
What rendered this archaeological find particularly interesting was the fact that this city was where the Ad, mentioned in the Quran, lived. It was Nicholas Clapp, a noted documentary filmmaker and a lecturer on archaeology, who found this city mentioned in the Quran. Being an Arabophile and a winning documentary filmmaker, Clapp had come across a very interesting book during his research on Arabian history. The book referred to Ubar, a very ancient city, and to tracks belonging to it. In order to aid his work to find these tracks, Clapp requested assistance from NASA to provide the satellite images of the area. Ancient manuscripts and maps in the Huntington Library in California. Here he quickly found a map drawn by the Greek Egyptian geographer Ptolemy in 200, which showed the location of an old city found in the region and the paths which actually led up to this city. Moreover, the trails in the map corresponded with the trails in the satellite pictures taken by NASA. The final destination of these trails was a broad site understood to have once been a city. Finally, the location of this legendary city was discovered. After a short while, excavations began and remains of an old city were brought to light. It was these remains that constituted the real proof that this ancient city was the city of the people of Ad, referred to in the Quran. Because among the structures unearthed during the excavations were pillars. This is just as is revealed in the verses. Don't you see what your Lord did with Ad Iram of the columns, whose like was not created in any land? So this is kind of like what the radar imaging showed as far as, you know, activity that happened from the punishment. And then these are like artistic renderings of what it looked like. But clearly there were holes where these were where the pillars were, where the Quran describes them as iramazat al-imad. And uh, so these are like holes where these big pillars were. So that's how they kind of like came to know about this. Uh, place and these are like the renderings artistic renderings of these places and then these are the actual uh, pictures so what is the lesson here the lesson here is that there's a warning that when Allah tells you I destroyed a nation because of how they behaved and if you are behaving the same way as those nations so here's a nation that was sent specifically to the Arabs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning that they became arrogant because of their ability to construct and build. And they became arrogant because of what? Their, their, how, because how big and tall and strong they were. Which you can say has some parallels or some links with the idea of genetic engineering today. That just because we can change a person looking taller and stronger and just because you can construct buildings that you think will never drop uh, does not make you the all-powerful. But this is where the world of technology is headed. And this is specifically where the Muslims of the Arab world are headed. And so the warning is there in the Quran for them to study. And so the Arab world needs to study the Prophet Shu'ib and Salih and Hud alayhim salam because they're beginning to have the same qualities that their nations that they were sent to have. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And then a general warning meaning of the prophets is to all because it's mentioned in Quran and Quran is for everyone. But specifically there are some prophets that were sent to the Arabs. So that's, but the, the warning is there for all of us, each and every one of us. That if we're getting uh, buildings that are too tall, it's a warning to us. And if we're getting houses we don't need, it's a warning to us. And if you're living in spaces that you don't really use and don't need, but just to show off, or just to say you have it, uh, unless, of course, the only shari exception would be like if you're in the business of selling real estate or something like that. But everybody understands what I'm trying to say. 
And so these warnings are there in the Quran, and inshallah ta'ala, uh, we can all benefit from that. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.